take the 30s, take Japan's deleveraging. These are iconic deleveraging and are deleveraging. At first, um, austerity is the path because you realize, oh, debt is a problem. And what we all have to do is uh, stop um, getting into more debt. That becomes obvious. We can't continue to do that. So we go through the austerity. But as we go through that austerity, there's a feedback loop because that lack of spending, that lacking of debt, causes somebody else's income to go down. Okay, so then there's a, there's a problem because of the debts. So we go to, we encounter a lot of debt defaults. And we think about uh, restructuring debts. And those debt defaults means, okay, how do we re-enter an agreement in which we can get past that, that you can pay what you can afford and so there's a, a, a debt restructuring, a lot of debt restructurings. But the debt restructurings also don't help because, well, they help to some extent, but they, they, they also bring with them problems because one man's debts are another man's assets. So if I lower your debt, let's say I'm, uh, uh, when you do a restructuring, you can pay half. Your mortgage, you come in, we'll readjust your mortgage, and you can pay half. Uh, then I have to write down that mortgage. And so my wealth goes down. And as my wealth goes down, I can borrow less and I can spend less. So it feeds on itself. So the problem is that there's too much debt relative to income. So you can reduce the debt by having austerity and cutting your debt, and that's good. And that's deflationary, and it's negative for growth because austerity means less spending. And you can restructure um, so that is deflationary, and it's negative for growth. And, and so that produces a lot of pain at the same time. So um, like in the, in the 30s, 1929 stock market crash, and you go through that, and it keeps feeding on itself, and it's not enough. It's not good enough because it causes that self-reinforcing process. And then eventually the central banks print money. Uh, so in March 1933, um, which was the bottom of the Great Depression, uh, President Roosevelt severs the link with gold and, and prints money because money, a debt is a promise to deliver money. So if I can slip a little money into the system, it eases that pressure. Um, the printing of money, people think, is inflationary. And in and of itself, it is inflationary. But if it's happening at the same time as the other deflationary factors are happening, so that there is still um, austerity, there is a certain amount, a certain amount of um, restructuring or working out debts, and the amount of printing so that they balance, all three of those approaches have the effect of lowering debt relative to income. So you can lower debt relative to income without having uh, a, a, you know, a terrible situation. It's still, not, not, this takes a long time. They call it the lost decade. Um, these countries go through lost decades. It's usually more than a decade, maybe 15 years. But it's an adjustment process, if done well, in which there's uh, the right mix between austerity, not raising debt relative to income, um, and um, restructuring, getting the debt payments in order, and putting enough money into the system. So you're seeing uh, Europe go through that. It's classic. And all countries and people and companies, in one way or another, you know, through history, this has happened. I mean, the, the, the main lesson to learn, but it's not human nature to, is not to have debt rise faster than income for an extended period of time because that won't that's a bubble that won't last but but because we're so responsive to what we've experienced we go through these cycles